Number 10, Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle, also known as the Devil's Triangle, has perplexed sailors and aviators for decades. One of the most famous incidents occurred in 1945 when Flight 19, a group of five US Navy bombers, disappeared without a trace during a training mission. Even more eerie was the disappearance a rescue plane sent to find them. Despite extensive search efforts, no wreckage was ever found. Over the years, numerous ships and aircraft have vanished within the Bermuda Triangle, fueling theories of paranormal activity, extraterrestrial interference or unusual natural phenomena. While most of these mysteries can be attributed to navigational errors, the Bermuda Triangle remains an enigmatic and spine-tingling location. Number 9, the Devil's Sea, or the Dragon's Triangle. Off the coast of Japan lies the Devil's Sea, often referred to as the Dragon's Triangle, with a history of bizarre disappearances. Perhaps the most famous incident was the disappearance of the Japanese research vessel Kayo Maru No. 5 in 1952. The ship vanished without a distress call or any wreckage found. Some attribute these disappearances to magnetic anomalies caused by underwater volcanic activity or methane hydrate eruptions, which would cause ships to lose buoyancy and sink suddenly. While there there are rational explanations for many incidents, the reputation of the Devil's Sea as a mysterious and potentially perilous place endures. Number 8. The Underwater City of Dwarka off the coast of India, submerged ruins believed to be the ancient city of Dwarka have captured the imagination of historians and archaeologists alike. Legend has it that Dwarka was founded by Lord Krishna and later submerged by the sea. Excavations have revealed structures and artifacts that suggest a sophisticated ancient civilization adding to the eerie aura of this underwater city. Exploring these ruins is both an archaeological adventure and a spiritual journey, as divers encounter submerged temples and remnants of a bygone era, shrouded in historical and religious mystique. Number 7. The Sargasso Sea the Sargasso Sea, a region in the North Atlantic Ocean, is known for its vast mats of floating sargassum seaweed. Its eerie reputation is tied to the disorienting experience of sailing through a seemingly endless expanse of tangled seaweed. Historically, sailors feared becoming trapped in the Sargasso, where the calm, windless waters could lead to prolonged voyages and dwindling supplies. Tales of ghost ships and derelict vessels adrift in the Sargasso have added to its mystique, even though many of these stories have been debunked. Today, the Sargasso Sea remains a captivating and haunting part of the ocean's ecosystem. Number 6, Point Nemo. Point Nemo, located in the South Pacific Ocean, is a desolate and remote spot, farther from land than any other point on Earth. The eerie aspect of Point Nemo lies in its isolation and the overwhelming feeling of being utterly alone in the vastness of the ocean. For astronauts aboard the International Space Station, Point Nemo is the closest point on Earth, a fact that adds an unsettling layer to the isolation experienced by those who venture to this remote location on the planet's surface. Number 5. The Black Hole of Andros The underwater cave system off the coast of Andros Island in the Bahamas is a labyrinth of pitch black tunnels and chambers. Its eerie reputation comes from the daunting experience of navigating through narrow, winding passages filled with darkness. Divers who explore these caves are often overwhelmed by a sense of isolation and the fear of getting lost in the inky depths. The Black Hole of Andros is a challenging and eerie destination for experienced cave divers seeking both adventure and the thrill of exploring the unknown. Number 4, the USS Oriskany, or the Great Carrier Reef. The USS Oriskany, a decommissioned aircraft carrier, was intentionally sunk in 2006 off the coast of Florida to create an artificial reef. Diving around this colossal rusting hulk is eerie due to the juxtaposition of military history and marine life. The ship once played a vital role in the Vietnam War, and exploring its sunken remains can evoke a sense of reverence and eeriness as divers encounter the ghosts of its past life amid the marine ecosystem that has since made it their home. Number 3. The Mary Celeste's Shipwreck The mystery of the Mary Celeste began in 1872, when the ship was found adrift in the Atlantic Ocean, entirely deserted. 
The crew's disappearance remains one of the greatest unsolved maritime mysteries. The ship was fully seaworthy, with provisions and personal belongings left behind, but there were no signs of a struggle. The eerie tale of the Mary Celeste has spawned countless theories, including piracy, mutiny, and paranormal occurrences. The Mary Celeste remains an enduring maritime mystery, shrouded in speculation and unanswered questions. When the ship was found adrift in the Atlantic Ocean, its crew, including the captain's wife and daughter, had seemingly vanished into thin air. Authorities could never definitively determine the fate of the crew. The ship's logbook revealed no signs of distress or unusual circumstances. The ghostly image of the Mary Celeste sailing aimlessly through the open sea, its crew inexplicably gone, continues to captivate the imagination and inspire tales of maritime enigma. Number 2. The Deep Sea Vents Hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor are eerie and fascinating ecosystems. These vents release superheated water rich in minerals, creating unique habitats for extremophiles, such as tube worms and giant clams, that thrive in the extreme conditions. The eerie aspect of deep sea vents lies in the complete darkness, crushing pressure, and the otherworldly creatures that inhabit that realm. Discovering these vents is like exploring an alien world deep beneath the ocean's surface where life has adapted to thrive in an environment that seems entirely inhospitable to humans. Number 1. The USS Indianapolis Wreck The USS Indianapolis was a US Navy cruiser that played a crucial role in WW2. However, it's best known for its tragic sinking in July 1945, shortly after delivering components for the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. After delivering its cargo, the ship was torpedoed by a Japanese submarine and quickly, and quickly sank. What makes the USS Indianapolis wreck particularly eerie is the harrowing ordeal that followed. Due to a communication error, the sinking was not immediately reported, and the crew was left adrift in shark-infested waters for days. Many perished from exposure, thirst, and shark attacks. Only 317 of the ship's nearly 1,200 crew members survived, making it one of the deadliest shark attacks in history. The wreck of the USS Indianapolis was only discovered in 2017, lying over 18,000 feet below the surface of the Philippine Sea. It serves as a haunting reminder of the ship's tragic history and the ocean's capacity to preserve the eerie remnants of the past. Number 10. The Devil's Sea or the Dragon's Triangle off the coast of Japan lies the Devil's Sea, often referred to as the Dragon's Triangle, with a history of bizarre disappearances. Perhaps the most famous incident was the disappearance of the Japanese research vessel Kayo Maru No. 5 in 1952. The ship vanished without a distress call or any wreckage found. Some attribute these disappearances to magnetic anomalies caused by underwater volcanic activity or methane hydrate eruptions, which could cause ships to lose buoyancy and sink suddenly. While there are rational explanations for many incidents, the reputation of the Devil's Sea as a mysterious and potentially perilous place endures. Number 9. The Underwater City of Dwarka Off the coast of India, submerged ruins believed to be the ancient city of Dwarka have captured the imagination of historians and archaeologists alike. Legend has it that Dwarka was founded by Lord Krishna and later submerged by the sea. Excavations have revealed structures and artifacts that suggest a sophisticated ancient civilization adding to the eerie aura of this underwater city. Exploring these ruins is both an archaeological adventure and a spiritual journey, as Divers encounter submerged temples and remnants of a bygone era, shrouded in historical and religious mystique. Number 8. The Sargasso Sea The Sargasso Sea, a region in the North Atlantic Ocean, is known for its vast mats of floating sargassum seaweed. Its eerie reputation is tied to the disorienting experience of sailing through a seemingly endless expanse of tangled seaweed. Historically, sailors feared becoming trapped in the Sargasso, where the calm, windless waters could lead to prolonged voyages and dwindling supplies. Tales of ghost ships and derelict vessels adrift the Sargasso adrift in the Sargasso have added to its mystique, even though many of these stories have been debunked. Today, the Sargasso Sea remains a captivating and haunting part of the ocean's ecosystem. Number 7. Point Nemo 
Point Nemo, located in the South Pacific Ocean, is a desolate and remote spot, farther from land than any other point on Earth. The eerie aspect of Point Nemo lies in its isolation and the overwhelming feeling of being utterly alone in the vastness of the ocean. How fun. For astronauts aboard the International Space Station, Point Nemo is the closest point on Earth, a fact that adds an unsettling layer to the isolation experienced by those who venture to this remote location on the planet's surface. Number 6. The Black Hole of Andros the underwater cave system off the coast of Andros Island in the Bahamas is a labyrinth of pitch black tunnels and chambers. Its eerie reputation comes from the daunting experience of navigating through narrow winding passages filled with darkness. Divers who explore these caves are often overwhelmed by a sense of isolation and the fear of getting lost in the inky depths. The black hole of Andros is a challenging and eerie destination for experienced cave divers seeking both adventure and the thrill of exploring the unknown. Number 5. The USS Oriskany the USS Oriskany, a decommissioned aircraft carrier, was intentionally sunk in 2006 off the coast of Florida to create an artificial reef. Diving around this colossal rusting hulk is eerie due to the juxtaposition of military history and marine life. The ship once played a vital role in the Vietnam conflict, and exploring its sunken remains can evoke a sense of reverence and eeriness as divers encounter the ghost of its past life amid the marine ecosystem that has since made it their home. Number 4. The Mary Celeste Shipwreck the mystery of the Mary Celeste began in 1872, when the ship was found adrift in the Atlantic Ocean entirely deserted. The crew's disappearance remains one of the greatest unsolved maritime mysteries. The ship was fully seaworthy, with provisions and personal belongings left behind, but there were no signs of a struggle. The eerie tale of the Mary Celeste has spawned countless theories, including piracy, mutiny, and paranormal occurrences. The Mary Celeste remains an enduring maritime mystery, shrouded in speculation and unanswered questions. When the ship was found adrift in the Atlantic Ocean, its crew, including the captain's wife and daughter, had seemingly vanished into thin air. Despite conducting an extensive investigation, authorities could never definitively determine the fate of the crew. Number 3. The Deep Sea Vents Hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor are eerie and fascinating ecosystems. These vents release superheated water rich in minerals, creating unique habitats for extremophiles, such as tube worms and giant clams, that thrive in the extreme conditions. The airy aspect of deep sea vents lies in the complete darkness, crushing pressure, and the otherworldly creatures that inhabit that realm. Discovering these vents is like exploring an alien world deep beneath the ocean surface, where life has adapted to thrive in an environment that seems entirely inhospitable to humans. Number 2. The USS Indianapolis Wreck the USS Indianapolis was a US Navy cruiser that played a crucial role in WW2. However, it's best known for its tragic sinking in July 1945, shortly after delivering components for the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. After delivering its cargo, the ship was torpedoed by a Japanese submarine and quickly sank. What makes the USS Indianapolis wreck particularly eerie is the harrowing ordeal that followed. Due to a communication error, the sinking was not immediately reported and the crew was left adrift in shark-infested waters for days. Many perished from exposure, thirst, and shark attacks. Only 317 of the ship's nearly 1,200 crew members survived, making it one of the deadliest shark attacks in history. Number 1. The Sagamore a grandiose hotel on a private island overlooking Lake George sounds like the perfect place for some rest and relaxation, or eternal rest for some guests. At the gorgeous 19th century Victorian resort, stories of ghost sightings are mainly confined to the elegant restaurants, but the Sagamore's most notorious ghost is more likely to be found playing outdoors. About 70 years ago, a guy who sold lost golf balls back to pro shop customers was hit by a car during his search. If you listen very closely, you can still hear him giggling there. At a number 10 spot, we have the 100 Step Cemetery. The 100 Step Cemetery is located in a town of Brazil, India. Remember, I said town, not the country. The cemetery gets its name from the long infamous staircase that lies right in the middle of it, and there are two versions of the legend about the staircase. One legend says that once you reach the 100 step, or the last step, 
The ghost of a past cemetery caretaker will appear right in front of you and whisper out the time and way you will pass away. However, once he says this, you must climb back down all the stairs, and if you don't count back to 100, the caretaker will take your life on the spot. The other version of this story is that when you go back down these steps, if the number you count is different than the number you walked up with, then your prophecy is false. Much of the stairs are overgrown with vegetation, so counting the stairs is much harder. And more recently, the cemetery even tried to tear out parts of the stairs. Are they trying to physically remove the urban legend from this place? I mean, a free fortune teller? Who wouldn't want that? At a number 9 spot, we're the Green Clawed Beasts. Supposedly lurking in the Ohio River near Evansville, Indiana, is a green clawed beast that has haunted residents since the 1950s. In the hot summer of 1955, Naomi Johnson, her three children, and their family friend Louise Lambeau went for a swim in the Ohio River. When Naomi was about 15 feet away from the shore, that's when she began to arch her back when all of a sudden something wrapped around her knee, pulling her down as well. She immediately started to swim back to shore, kicking whatever hit her in the process. After she was swimming away, she felt her leg get grabbed again from behind, but she was able to grab an inner tube that they were using as a float to get away. The odd thing about this incident was that when she was getting treated for her scratches, the authorities recalled a strange bluish green stain that was on her lower leg at the time. Then a short time after this, a man arrived at Naomi's door with physical evidence showing that he was an Air Force Colonel, and he told her to never speak of the incident ever again. Ever since there has been no sighting of this supposed creature, so much of it is unknown if this creature really truly exists today, but what do you guys think grabbed Naomi in the water that day? And at number 8 spot we have Diana of the Dunes. It's said that if you walk along the shores of Indiana Dunes National Park, you may see a pale naked woman swimming or running around near the waters of Lake Michigan. However, don't be deceived because what you may be seeing is a ghost of a lady who used to do the same thing back in the early 1900s. The real woman's name was Alice Mabel Gray and she lived as a hermit in a driftwood shack along the shore. However, she wasn't always like this. She earned a bachelor degree from the University of Chicago in 1903, but as years went by, she found that the city life and the working life made her more depressed each and every single day. She then decided to escape everything and ever since she's been known as the Diana of the Dunes. Her spirit is not so friendly. It's said that if you get too close to the naked woman, then she may drag you down into the water with her. This is because in her years alive, Alice ended up falling in love with an abusive man named Paul Wilson. So when Alice gave birth to her second child, she ended up passing away from uremic poisoning which was due to repeated punches to her abdomen. Ever since this incident, her spirit has been nothing but aggressive to young men. At a number 7 spot, we have Devil's Road. The name Devil's Road should give you all the warnings you need before you decide to take a drive down this road. In Jasper, Indiana, there was a school bus full of kids that stalled in the middle of these train tracks. The moment the bus stalled, the kids couldn't help but notice a train coming straight towards them. However, before they could even think to escape, the train ended up smashing right through the bus with all the children passing away immediately and the only survivor being the bus driver. However, when the bus driver noticed there was no survivors, he was so distraught, he decided to take his own life using a firearm. Nowadays, people claim that the spirits of the children remain on the road. Some have tested their luck by stopping their car on the train tracks and dropping it into neutral, and this is when you supposedly begin to see children walking towards you, or if someone has said their car completely stalls on this railroad. Regardless, I wouldn't recommend doing this because you're just putting yourself in that same position the school bus was in that day. At a number 6 spot with the Culbertson Mansion. Stored away in New Albany, Indiana is the Culbertson Mansion. Out of all the mansions I've mentioned, this has to be one of the most gruesome yet unfortunate histories attached to it. In the 1800s, this mansion was struck by lightning and everyone who was inside of the home passed away from the fire that engulfed the entire place. Then in 1933, the mansion was sold to a local named Dr. Webb and his family. But after a year of living in here, they were all found dead. All their bodies showed evidence of being tortured, yet the case never ended up getting solved. As well, later on it was found that the doctor kept some of his patients locked in the basement. Nowadays, the house offers many haunted tours, but staff members still report things they can't explain. And more specifically, in the basement where all the horrific events took place. In the hub list, we have the Edna Collins Bridge. Out of all the bridges in Putnam County, the Edna Collins Covered Bridge is the most recent. However, despite not being the oldest, it's still believed to be the most haunted out of all of them. Locals claim that the bridge is haunted by a mother and child duo. Legend goes that a little girl by the name of Edna Collins lived in the area nearby and would occasionally swim in Little Walnut Creek, which is the creek the bridge now resides over. 
Her parents had a tradition of dropping her off on their way to town, and when they returned, they would honk three times to let her know that it was time to go. However, one day after they honked three times, Edna was nowhere to be found. Instead, they searched a nearby creek and they found that she had drowned in it. It's said that shortly after, the mother took her own life and hung herself on the trees where the bridge is located today. And ever since, this bridge has been haunted by this mother and child duo. At number four spot, we have the Whitcombs Library. Before his death in 1852, former Indiana Governor James Whitcomb donated his entire library to Ashbury University, which is now known as DePau University. This library was filled with all the books that he read in his entire lifetime. This collection included one book named The Poems of Ossian, the Son of Fingal, which was locked away in a specific section of the library which was closed to the public. One small boy grew more and more curious about the book and then one day in the 1800s, he decided to sneak into the library and steal the book for himself. However, after he finished the book, he woke up to a spectral finger pointing at him asking who stole the book. Ever since, many believed it was Whitcomb's ghost protecting his books and no one has ever tried to steal a book since. To this day, there are still occasional sightings of his ghost, but as long as no one is stealing his books, then he shouldn't do anything aggressive. At a number three spot, we have St. Mary of the Woods College. St. Mary of the Woods College was opened in 1840 and is the oldest Catholic college in the entire state. The Lefer and Foley buildings on the campus have had many reports of something supernatural lurking inside of them. Some have said they have been grabbed by invisible forces and there are stories of an exorcism done in the Foley building. However, the most notorious spirit found at the college is the Faceless Nun. Legend goes that the Faceless Nun is the ghost of a sister nun who used to teach in the art department at the campus. It was there where she began a self-portrait but passed away from an illness just before finishing it. However, the section has been destroyed and now it seems that her spirit is found everywhere on campus. When people spot her, they are usually stunned and even freeze in terror. At a number two spot with the Pugwudgie. The Pugwudgie is a two to three feet tall creature that lurks in swamps and dense forests. He physically resembles a troll or sort of a goblin, and one of their active spots happens to be in Mound State Park in Anderson, Indiana. Author and archaeologist Paul Startsman claimed to have encountered one of these creatures back in 1927. He claimed to be walking alone in the park when he noticed a little man half his size with abnormally large ears, gray skin, and a mushroom cut. They are not known to attack humans, but are instead known to be great deceivers and tricksters. However, other iterations of the creature say the complete opposite, telling how these creatures are indeed bloodthirsty and need small gifts and sacrifices in order to appease them. One telltale sign you'll know that they're near is from their high-pitched gremlin-like laugh. So you can only imagine the feeling you'd get walking here at night when all of a sudden you hear the green goblin. At a number one spot with the Zion United Church of Christ Cemetery. Potentially the most haunted cemetery in the entire state of Indiana, the Zion United Church of Christ Cemetery is supposedly a hotspot for anyone looking to see something supernatural. Located in Poland, Indiana, this cemetery has gravestones dating back all the way since the 1840s. And the amount of reports coming from this cemetery is enough to make anyone believe there's something sinister inside of it. The ghost that many locals see is the one that walks outside of the cemetery, warning people not to enter the cursed grounds. Some have said the ghost tells them to turn back, and those who have been unfortunate enough to be inside of the cemetery report unexplained sounds and lights and the constant feeling that they're being watched entire time they're there. Coming in at our number 10 spot, we have Radiation Man. This is the story of a man who was kept alive for 83 days just so doctors could see the effects of radiation and how long a human could last. In 1999, three technicians at a nuclear power plant in Japan were involved in a catastrophic accident that left one of them, Hishashi Uchi, with the highest dose of radiation any human has ever experienced. Uchi, along with Masato Shinohara and Yutaka Yakokoa, were working at a plant when a nuclear reaction occurred, emitting neutron radiation and gamma rays all over the place. As a result, Uchi received a devastating 17 sieverts of radiation, while Shinohara and Yogokawa received fatal doses of 10 and 3 three sieverts respectively. The effects of radiation on Uchi were immediate and severe, causing burns and completely damaging his internal organs and immune system. Despite being treated by a team of top medical professionals from around the world, Uchi's condition continued to deteriorate. He underwent numerous skin transplants and was kept alive through the use of blood and fluids, including drugs and life support. Tragically, on the 59th day of treatment, Uchi's heart stopped three times in just 49 minutes, causing severe damage to his brain and his kidneys. He eventually passed away on December 21st, 1999 due to multi-organ failure, spending the final 83 days of his life in intense pain and suffering. 
At our number nine spot, we have the Unit 731. Yup, this story is terrible. Unit 731 was a Japanese biological warfare research unit that operated in China during World War II. It was headquartered in a facility in the Pingfan district, located in China, and they conducted experiments on human subjects in order to test the effectiveness on biological weapons and even study the effects of various diseases. The unit was established in 1936 and operated until the end of the war in 1945. It was led by Shiro Ishii, a Japanese army doctor, and was composed of several hundred scientists and medical professionals. The unit conducted a wide range of experiments on human subjects, including prisoners of war and civilians, often without their consent or even their knowledge. Some of the experiments conducted by Unit 731 included infecting subjects with diseases such as the bubonic plague, cholera, and typhoid fever. They would also study the effects of frostbite by deliberately exposing subjects to extreme cold and performing surgeries on live subjects without any sort of anesthesia. As a result, many of the subjects died in these experiments and the unit is believed to have killed thousands of people during its operation. After the war, many of the members of Unit 731 were granted immunity from prosecution in an exchange for sharing the data they had collected with the United States. This decision has been heavily criticized, obviously, as it allowed the perpetrators of these atrocities to evade accountability for their actions. However, in more recent years, the Chinese government did call for Japan to take responsibility for this Unit 731 and to provide compensation to the victims and their families. The Chinese government was also called for the unit's activities to be recognized as war crimes and for the perpetrators to be held accountable once and for all. At a number 8 spot, we have the Elevator Man. Apparently some time ago, in a towering skyscraper located in Korea, there was a young woman named Karuko. She was a very bright night. 19 year old student who lived in the 14th floor of her building. But on one fateful night, she had an experience in an elevator that would change her life. As the elevators began to close, a handsome stranger managed to slip his hand in order to stop them. The man stepped inside of the elevator and stood very close to Karuko. This is when the two began to flirt and engage in very small talk. The stranger told her he lived on the 13th floor, just one floor below her. As the elevator approached the 13th floor and the man walked out, the man suddenly turned around, turned to Karuko, and said, I'll see you upstairs. He then pulled out a knife as he left, he laughed and then disappeared towards the staircase. The doors of the elevator then shut, leaving Kruko alone and afraid. As the elevator continued to climb to the 14th floor, Kruko frantically pressed every button trying to get it to stop. But it was all in vain. The elevator doors finally opened up on the 14th floor, and to Karuko's terror, she found the man waiting for her. She was tragically slain before she could even scream for help, and since then, many have claimed this is a true story, and it's said to be the explanation why elevators now have this stop button. Some even say that the man who killed Kruko still roams the halls of this building, trying to lure innocent people into the elevator with him. And also, there is a game I mentioned in a lot of my past videos, which include this story. And this is basically the origin story to that. So if you ever want to know more, just search up the elevator game online and you can even play this yourself. At a number 7 spot, we have the P-40 ghost plane. In 1942, American radar detected a strange aircraft approaching their territory from Japan. Although it appeared to be an airplane, it did not have the typical markings of an aerial attack. The American military dispatched two pilots to intercept the mysterious plane. As they approached it, they discovered that the aircraft was a P-40, and they were surprised to find that it bore markings that had not been used since the Pearl Harbor attack. Additionally, they observed that the plane was in very poor condition, with bullet holes riddling the fuselage and the landing gear completely blown away. The pilots were amazed that the plane was even able to fly in the first place. However, they were shocked to find the pilot slumped in the cockpit, wearing a flight suit stained with fresh blood. When the pilots looked through the window, the pilot raised his hand slightly and turned toward them, offering a meek wave. Shortly thereafter, the plane crashed to the ground with a deafening roar. American troops arrived at the crash site, but found no evidence evidence of the pilot or any identifying markings from the plane. Researchers later found a diary at the crash site that helped them to determine that the plane must have come from Mindanao, which was an island a thousand miles away. The rest of the story still remains a complete mystery. Some have speculated that the plane may have been downed over a year earlier, and the pilot managed to survive on his own in the wild. He could have scavenged parts from other downed aircraft, repaired his airplane, and then navigated his way back to the homeland through hostile territory. However, the mystery remains as to how heavy the P-40 aircraft could have taken off without any sort of landing gear. Japanese records confirm that an American P-40 flew over Formosa on December 8th, 1942, but where it came, where it was headed, and how it even got airborne still remains a mystery. Add a number six spot with the Maria Labo. 
Marie Labo was a woman from the province of Capiz in the Philippines who had a happy family consisting of a loving husband and one son. However, she decided to work abroad in England for the sake of her family's financial stability. Maria was lucky enough to have a good employer who treated her well, but she didn't know that her employer was a vampire, supposedly. It was said that Maria was a combination of a maid and a caregiver to this vampire employer, who would always provide her with half-cooked liver to eat. After a few months of working for him, Maria started to feel sick. Little did she know that she has ingested some of her employer's blood, which caused her this unknown illness. Eventually, Maria decided to return home to the Philippines to live with her family. Upon returning home, Maria's husband, who was a police officer, was very surprised to see her. She had already prepared dinner, but but when her husband asked where their son was, Maria just replied, our son is right there. Her husband was confused and it wasn't until he opened the refrigerator that he realized the horrific truth. The meat he had eaten that day was their own son. In a fit of rage, Maria's husband picked up a large knife and slashed her face, leaving a large scar, which is why she was called Maria Labo. Labo means scar in Filipino. From that day on, Maria went on a murderous rampage and stalked or hunted in many different locations within the Philippines. However, her husband continued to hunt for Maria because he just wanted to kill her and end all of this. It is also said that whenever Maria was known to be in any place within the Philippines, people would try to find and kill her in order to save her own children. So there would be this large hunt out for her and it would just be crazy. In the hover list, we have the Hello Kitty murders. Our story begins in May 1999 when a 13-year-old girl approached the Hong Kong police, claiming that a woman whom her boyfriend had helped to kill was haunting her. The police was initially skeptical, but when the girl described how a 23-year-old woman was brutally tortured and bound with electrical wire in a third floor flat on Granville Road 31, they knew they had to investigate. As they searched the apartment, they uncovered some truly horrifying evidence, a large Hello Kitty doll that had been stuffed with a woman's head. The victim of this ghastly crime was Fan Man Yi, a 23-year-old nightclub hostess who has been abducted for over a year, allegedly for failing to repay a $20,000 debt. According to the various media reports, Fan was held captive for over a month, during which time she was subjected to brutal torture on a daily basis until she eventually succumbed to her injuries. The men responsible for her death then chopped up the body into tiny pieces and disposed of it with the garbage. Some versions of the story claim that they even skinned her and boiled her. Although this is difficult to confirm, what is even more terrifying is that her severed head was sewn inside of a Hello Kitty doll, which became the bizarre story for this tragic accident, the Hello Kitty murder. When the news of this gruesome murder hit the press, it horrified residents of Hong Kong and sparked a media frenzy that lasted for months. As if the story couldn't get any more chilling, there was even reports of a shadowy female figure lurking near the apartment building where this happened, and it was captured on various CCTV cameras from nearby buildings. At our number 4 spot, we have the Tugu Complex. In the city of Malang are three schools who are in deep connection with the horrors committed in World War II. Back in the 1940s, these three schools were used as concentration camps by the opposing Japanese soldiers. The Japanese created an underground system of crawl spaces and secret rooms that connected each school along with the local train station and governor's office. This would ensure accessibility everywhere. Legend says that two teenagers attempted to explore these tunnels and secret passageways, but after a short time, one student came out screaming while the other one was found weeks later in the train station in a trance-like state and unable to speak about the horrors he saw. Many believe it was the ghost of those who lost their lives there in World War II. Another occurrence is the blood stains on the floor tiles in each of these buildings. And the odd thing is, is that workers say that removing these stains are nearly impossible, and some would even fall ill after completing the cleanup job, which is why they have stopped doing it completely. At a number 3 spot, we are the Orang Minyak. The Orang Minyak, or the Oily Man, is a creature that takes the shape of a man that is covered in a thick murky black oil. It comes at the darkest time of night when it's almost impossible to see. It snatches young women in rural villages when they're sleeping, and this is why many people fear oil spills in the country, oddly enough. It can shapeshift into oil to slip through cracks in the walls and the floors, so there's basically no place to hide from the Orang Minyak. In Malaysia's past, young women were told to wear clothing that was worn by a man so that this creature couldn't catch their scent. Keeping a mirror nearby it was also a must because this creature doesn't like to see their own reflection. This became such a big urban legend that some girls would cover their rooms in all mirrors, but in my opinion, that is just as creepy as this creature. Number 2. The Karak Highway This Malaysian highway is said to be the world's most haunted highway. It is a 70 kilometer long interstate highway that connects Kuala Lumpur to the Genting Highlands. 
The amount of paranormal reports from this highway alone is enough to make someone take a way longer detour instead. The first of these incidents happened when a couple and their baby were returning one night from vacation. The car then suddenly broke down on the side of the road, and as he looked for someone to help, he notices the highway was completely empty. So he walks up to the closest nearby phone booth to call for help, but the man never ended up returning. After a few hours of waiting, his wife calls the police, but when they arrive, they tell her to not step out of the vehicle and to not look behind them. After walking a distance away, she turns around to see her husband's headless body being devoured by a banshee-like creature on top of their car. Also on Karak Highway, if you find yourself stuck behind a yellow Volkswagen Beetle, just get away from it. This vehicle is known to stalk drivers and even cause them to get into fatal accidents. So be extra careful if you guys decide to drive near this area in Malaysia. At a number one spot with the Mongolian death worm. The Gobi Desert located between Mongolia and China is said to have a Mongolian death worm, otherwise known as an intestine worm, due to its appearance of being fleshy and red in color. This two to seven foot long creature has the ability to spit out venomous liquid out of its mouth. And if you ever get close enough to touch the creature, it is believed that the entire body is covered in a sticky poisonous substance that will kill you on touch. And if that wasn't enough, it can even electrify you the same way an eel can. While movies on the creature depict it as being this large colossal being, it's actually believed to be a lot smaller at around 7 feet. Regardless, the fact that this creature can hide anywhere in the desert sands and come out with basically no weaknesses makes it one of the most dangerous and scariest ones on this list. At number 10 spot, we have Crisper Babies. Imagine you could customize yourself however you like, including your height, your skin color, your voice, and maybe testosterone for men. Well, this is what Chinese researcher Ho Zhenku did. In 2018, the Chinese researcher made the world's first gene-edited baby using CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR was a new technology that allowed for DNA editing. Specifically, Ho was trying to encode HIV co-receptor with the goal of making a set of baby twins resistant to the virus. Except this form of gene editing is more scary than that. Scientists say that it can be used for virtually any other modification. At our number 9 spot, we have the social credit system. In 2014, China released the renowned social credit system. The one most of us have heard about, you know, on TikTok, YouTube, everywhere has talked about it. But many of us don't understand how it works. It basically is a system that works with AI, CCTV, surveillance footage, and listening devices that either rewards you or takes away points. In a way, these points decide how valuable you are as a person in the society. The fear of having a low social credit score score is nationwide because you may be put up on a massive billboard for everyone to see and mock. Examples of how you can increase your social credit score include talk about good about the Chinese government on social media, donating to charity, helping people around your community, teaching Chinese, basically anything that's good or good for China. To lose points, you can drive over the speed limits, litter around, play your music a little bit too loud, or even spending money on something that they deem is dumb purchases. And punishments for having low scores could mean bans from public transit, slowed down Wi-Fi, or even banned from any luxurious restaurants or hotels. The fact that they implemented the Black Mirror episode into real life is scary enough, but the fact that the government is constantly stalking and judging you is even more terrifying. At a number 8 spot, we have Super Drones. To increase their military presence in the open waters, China has unveiled a mothership named the Zuhai Yun, which carries over 50 advanced unmanned drones. So basically, it's an unmanned boat carrying autonomous drones, so no human is on board, and yet the ship is capable of destruction on a different level. Each drone is very intelligent. Each one knows what the other one is doing, so if these drones decide to attack a human, then all of the other drones would attack too. Warfare without the use of human soldiers is horrible. These drones can move at the speeds no human can reach. They can hit and detect at ranges no human could ever possibly think about. And they're able to be made like, just like that. Just imagine if they decide to put their entire funding on these drones and made a complete army. Elon said this about the situation. You make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money by just taking the, the, the face ID chip that's used in cell phones and uh, having a small explosive charge and a, and a standard drone and have them just do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram into them and explode. You can do that right now, no extra, no new technology is needed. Right now. At our number 7 spot, we have the artificial sun. Located at the Institute of Plasma Physics of the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Hefei, China, lies the sun. But Andrew, the sun is in outer space, not in China. 
Sorry, my bad. The artificial sun. Sounds pretty terrifying on the surface. Like just imagine how hot the sun is and how much power is contained within that. Fortunately, their purpose was for something else well needed in the future and that is energy. There is no question we're running out of fossil fuels and all the other methods we have tried are just not sustainable over long periods of time. China then created the sun to unlock clean and limitless energy. Then in this year, they were able to reach a record high of 126 million degrees Fahrenheit at its core. And for those who don't know, that's five times hotter than the sun. They needed this core so hot because this intense pressure and the high temperature make atomic nuclei fuse together which creates new elements or energy. Except in this case, this sun could make limitless energy. At number 6 Paul, we have AI supremacy. China has been leading the world in the development of artificial intelligence for years now. China has also made significant headway in developing practical applications of AI. In particular, the country is making major strides in self-driving cars, facial recognition and voice recognition, especially used with their social credit system that I mentioned above. But should we be worried? Yes and no. AI is good for its various uses, but in the hands of the wrong people, AI could mean the end of our civilization. And in more scary news, according to The Telegraph, the Institute of Artificial Intelligence at HIFI, Comprehensive National Science Center created an AI program that could allegedly analyze brain waves and facial expressions to gauge whether a person is loyal to the Chinese Communist Party, basically claiming that it could read our minds. Right in the hump of our list, we have supersonic missiles. China has the second largest budget on their military, so best know they're chasing USA in the arms race especially in the missile arms race with the recent developments of a hypersonic missile. For those who don't know, hypersonic missiles are these missiles that can travel between 5 to 25 times the speed of sound, which makes them increasingly hard to hit, along with the fact that they can operate in a different region of the atmosphere. To put it in perspective, slower subsonic missiles travel a bit lower and intercontinental ballistic missiles are a bit higher, which makes these guys right in the middle region where many countries don't have the capability to detect. This summer, China has had claimed that they sent hypersonic missiles out and it went around the world. The scary thing is, is that Russia has claimed their hypersonic missiles are able to carry nukes around the world, and China is only growing their nuclear arsenal as we speak, with many estimating that they would have about a thousand warheads by the end of the decade. At number four spot, we have facial recognition. I elaborate about this on the past points, but I want to show you guys just how scary facial recognition software is. At any given time, China's CCTV surveillance cameras can detect a person, who they are, what family they came from, what crimes they committed, what they do for work, and obviously their social credit score. China's facial recognition system logs literally every single Chinese citizen and they have a population of 1.4 billion people, meaning that database is probably massive. China has also been accused of using this to commit the atrocities done against the Muslims in the country. They did this by using the same AI to locate Muslims within the crowds and later approach them for questioning. Being watched by the government on all your action definitely affects the behavior of a human. So in a way, this technology is controlling the population to act a certain way deemed appropriate by the Chinese government. Guess wearing hyper-realistic masks is the new thing to do in China. All the way at a number 3 spot, we have an EMP. We mentioned hypersonic missiles in my last points, but they also have the capability to carry EMPs. EMPs or electromagnetic pulse is an intense electric burst that damages electronics over a given area. It acts like a giant magnet breaking everything electronic along its path. This would mean a complete shutdown of power grids and it can even corrupt the data inside of hard drives, which is detrimental if used on government buildings and areas. Basically, this could cause cities to be in complete darkness. Although it doesn't do anything to humans directly, the issue is much bigger than that. Have you ever spent a day without internet or power? How many issues did you have initially? Now imagine that at a larger scale where your government is in complete darkness as well. Sounds like a huge threat. At number two spot, we have biological warfare. Many have claimed that the coronavirus originating from Wuhan, China was actually a biological weapon they released to cause global panic. Allegedly, Chinese military scientists were already looking in 2015 how to create a weaponized biological weapon based on documents obtained by the US State Department. Although China declined any sort of allegations towards releasing COVID on purpose, it's widely known that China is notorious for lying and hiding everything not from just the world, but their own citizens. After seeing how the world reacted to the pandemic, biological warfare seems like the best way to control citizens and cause international panic. So whatever China did, it worked. At number one spot, we have stronger military planes. As I mentioned earlier, China is advancing their military very, very quickly after pouring in more and more money every single year. One of their military advancements include the J-20 fighter jet, and it was made with a purpose to combat the American fighter plane, the F-22 Raptor. Notorious for its stealth, speed, and agility, the J-20 is capable of reaching speeds up to 
to 2,000 kilometers per hour, but they are not known for the speed. Instead, the Chinese government emphasized the stealth component, making it an effective long-range interceptor. They have currently built an arsenal of around 200 of them, which are all functional and ready for a battle. General Wilsbash discussed and praised another one of Chinese planes named the KJ-500, mentioning their features of long-range air-to-air missiles and how that greatly changes the playing field in the air. At number 10 spot, we have the water tank of Dapashi. Located in Dapashi Basundara, I am so sorry if I mispronounced that, lies this innocent-looking underground tank to store water around the community. Although this is necessary for any community and serves as a benefit, many locals are actually too afraid to go anywhere near it. Of course, this doesn't mean that they couldn't get their water due to fear. Instead, they would probably just ask someone else to get it for them. But what could stop people from getting a basic necessity like water? It all started with the sounds of crying, shouting, and other strange noises coming from inside of the tank. And it was said that the sounds grew even louder by the nighttime. This is also the time where locals claim that they also see the spirit of a decomposing man standing nearby the tank. Legends say that a group of robbers mugged a man near this water tank and instead of a quick theft one of the men accidentally killed the man so they thought that they could put the body inside of this tank and they locked it but instead hours later they would hear the man struggling for his life inside of the water tank soon after the man would pass and the robbers would get caught but imagine drinking from this water tank after this incident doesn't this kind of remind you of Cecil Hotel a bit anyone at number nine spot we have Raniban many people know Raniban for their breathtaking views and incredible sceneries but inside of this nature escape is hidden something dark Within the jungle of Rhineban village, there is this gigantic tree looking straight out of a cartoon with its widespread and exposing roots. Except take away the beauty from this tree and you'll understand why every local avoids this. Warning, the story is pretty explicit so viewer discretion is advised. Legend goes that several years ago, a man assaulted and murdered a girl right underneath this tree. After some research, this turned out to be a true story and has a lot more disturbing details that I couldn't mention on this video. However, after her death, people in the area started to hear noticeable crying coming from underneath the tree. But when they went to to investigate, nothing was there. And to make things even more spookier, just days after this, the man who murdered the girl was executed by hanging on the same tree. So best believe there's more than one ghost sitting underneath it. At number eight spot, we're the ghosts of Mount Everest. Being the tallest mountain in the world, people are bound to come in thousands to conquer the challenge. However, with a fatality rate at 14%, many climbers have not been able to finish a trip and their bodies still lie on this mountain to this day. So best believe after seeing these bodies and hearing their horrific stories, some ghost stories in Everest are bound to pop up. On your journey to the top, chances are you'll come across the 3,000 corpses that lie on the mountain to this day. One is a man known as Green Boots, as seen on the body at the time of his death, but his real name is Swang Bajor. Many climbers claim to see the apparition of this climber with Green Boots encourage them to push through the journey. Being at such an extreme height, many mountaineers suffer from altitude sickness and causes many to see vivid hallucinations, with the majority of them claiming to see ghosts all around them, and I'm not surprised. At number 7 spot, we have the Royal Palace of Nepal. On June 1st, 2001, one of the worst royal massacres occurred at the Royal Palace of Nepal. The deaths included nine members of the royal family, including King Barindra and Queen Ashraya. The culprit turned out to be the son and crown prince, Dipendra, who is said to have opened fire on the palace grounds when a party was happening. He shot his own dad, his own mother, and his own siblings. And since we're talking about a monarchy, and also because he killed all other lines of succession, he was appointed king, but only for a temporary time as he was in a coma since the attack due to shooting himself. Shortly after the massacre, locals around the palace begin to hear sounds of screaming, shouting, and the most notorious sound they would document is the sound of gunshots. They claim it was the gunshots from the massacre and its haunting sounds are still trapped in the palace to this day. At number six spot, we have the Lakey Dance. To educate y'all in Nepal culture, one of their infamous traditions is this Lakey Dance. This is considered the dance of a demon. And although the name is pretty daunting, the reason they do this is not. So Lakey is a term they use to denote carnivorous demons. So the story goes that Lakey fell in love with a Nepalese girl. So in an attempt to win her heart, the demon decides to take human form to see his lover, but when he decides to enter the city, everyone decides to capture him. Well, because he is a demon. So the king meets with his demon and makes a pretty generous offer. He proposes that he gives a demon a place in the city only if he promises to protect the children from tragedies and other supernatural entities. So the demon agreed, hence the dance. The costumes they use are both beautiful and pretty terrifying, depending on how you want to look at it. And one odd thing about this tradition dance, opposed to other traditional dances, is that this dance is not taught, but it's said that the dancers have it inherited through their genes. This also causes many others to believe that the demon is in fact controlling them, but in the end of the day, he means well, so it's okay. Right in the humper list, we have Devgat. Devgat is a religious Hindu site located in Chichwan, also known as Aryaga. On July 12, 2009, police discovered several human skulls and bones scattered all around the area. The case remains unsolved to this day. Well, it's because the grounds were formerly used for cremation. Groups like the Agoris and Tantrics come here to do some questionable rituals 
as well, which only adds to the local belief that this place is truly haunted. Specifically, locals claim to see around four to five women apparitions approaching the river by night. They appear to be dancing, but they're floating above the ground. The craziest thing about this is that they only start this dance by lighting themselves on fire, and only when they are completely engulfed in flames is when they'll begin their dance. And people claim to see their dance daily. At number four spot, we have Mugling and Naryangat. If you want to take a hike in Nepal, this place is definitely a must with their stunning waterfalls and untouched nature. Except despite this beauty, locals warn tourists to not travel down the roads nearby at night. This is because many have reported hitchhiking ghosts who disappear shortly after being picked up. As well, they also claim to see apparitions running in front of their car, which only causes a lot more accidents in the area. Police have already discovered several human bodies in the area with many of the cases still unresolved. This led many to believe in the supernatural, but many others proposed a serial kill in the area, and it would make sense. But two theories, two bad options. In the past, the towns around the highway were just deserted fishing regions, which was a dangerous place for crime and violence. The spirits found on the highway were said to be tortured souls whose remains might lie unattended in the woods still. At number three spot, we have the Kia. A Kia is translated into a ghostly figure, but ghosts in Nepal are seen as something different than we see in the Western world. In Nepal, it's widely believed that every house contains a Kia and their backstory. Like any ghost, these Kia can either be good or they can be bad. The good will obviously protect the family, the home, and your luck, but the bad ones will do everything in their power to destroy your family and ultimately every single one of your lives. You'll know if you've seen a Kia because they are pretty distinct. They appear as a slender skeleton, so in a way they act as a poltergeist because you can see them the whole time instead of them just being invisible like any other ghost. It's believed they like to pull pranks like throwing objects around the house and throwing blankets off of you. And in some cases, they will try to scare the family so bad that they will choose to leave the house completely, leaving the Kia all alone in the house. Although you can see this ghost, the majority of people will never actually know if they have a Kia in their place, and only you'll know if you fetch it out and seek one. Maybe you'll have one, but who knows. At number two spot with the Bokshi. Nepal legend says that witchcraft is widely practiced in remote areas of Nepal, except at this time, their witch description was far from accurate. Basically, any woman who had something bad to say or raised her voice at the patriarchy would be considered a witch or a Bokshi. The problem with Bokshi is that it has become so extreme that women are being murdered in the name of this specific ritual and are forced to become a ghost where they will be lost and seen roaming around the streets looking for answers. Even to this day, people are getting accused of being witches. Am I being confused or am I in the Salem witch trial still? Because why are people still believing in this stuff? Just for excuse to execute women. I will never get it and good for girls for haunting the streets for this one because this one is kind of reasonable in my opinion. At number one spot, we have the Sundarijal. Located nearby Kathmandu is a river that is nowhere near your regular rivers back at home. Back in the day, up until now, the river has been mainly used as a source of drinking water, but the fact many locals claim that the river is haunted has led many people to avoid a necessity like water. The river runs through a rainforest which is said to have restless souls hidden inside of it. As well, many have said that even touching the river can lead to your doom. Witnesses have seen locals and visitors reaching the river's edge only to tumble over and drown shortly after, and for some statistics, at least one person loses their life in this very river every single year. Now, as the years go by, the body count begins to rise up, causing more and more restless spirits. It could almost be said that this river is the closest thing to nature's own human sacrifice. Number 10, the cursed Kleenex commercial. In 1986, Kleenex released a commercial in Japan that has sparked a series of disturbing urban legends. The ad featured a woman in white and an ogre looking child sitting on a pile of hay and enjoying Kleenex tissues while the song It's a Fine Day by Jane and Barton played in the background. While almost instantly after the commercial was aired, TV stations and Kleenex corporate allegedly began receiving complaints about the ad, which many found very unsettling. Some people claim that the entire film crew met untimely deaths in freak accidents following this, while others said that the child in the commercial had passed away immediately after filming. There are also rumors that the actress Kaiku Matsuzaka had either passed away or been committed to a psychiatric hospital or even became pregnant with a demon baby following the commercial. Others claim that when the ad came on at night, the singer's voice in the commercial transformed from that of a young soprano to a raspy old woman's. And the ad became so unsettling to the public that Kleenex eventually pulled it and replaced it with a different one. However, after doing further research, Kaiku Matsuzaka, the girl in the video, is alive and well. And besides that, it's not that bad of an ad. Or at least I think that. At a number 9 spot, we have the Sony Timer. The Sony Timer, also known as the Sony Kill Switch, is a rumor feature that is said to exist in electronic devices produced by Sony. The feature was that Sony devices were equipped with a timer that causes the product to stop functioning after a predetermined period of time, forcing you to purchase a replacement. Considering the stuff we know about the Apple updates slowing your phone down, this is really not a surprise now. 
Anyways, the legend of the Sony timer originated in Japan in the 1980s and early 1990s. And despite the lack of concrete evidence to support the myth, a significant portion of the Japanese population believed in it. The legend remained confined in Japan until 2006 when a recall of over 4 million Dell laptops equipped with defective Sony lithium batteries rekindled the legend of the Sony timer. And despite Sony's efforts to contain the rumor, it eventually came to the knowledge of consumers outside of Japan and had a negative impact on the sales of Sony VAIO laptop computers. Then more recently in 2021, the legend resurfaced once again when an anti-cheat measure in the PlayStation Network had the potential to render games unplayable on certain PlayStation consoles. But much of this is still speculation and such a thing is not confirmed whether or not it truly existed. But we really know that they try to make our devices bad so they want us to buy a replacement. We all know that. At a number 8 spot, we have the Alice Killings. The Alice Killings remain one of the most mysterious and unsolved serial killings in Japanese history. From 1999 to 2005, five killings took place, each with a calling card left at the scene by the killer. More specifically, a playing card with the word Alice would be written on it on the victim's blood. The victims were diverse, ranging from a restaurant owner, to a high school student, to a college student, to a nurse. However, they all shared the eerie and gruesome playing card left at the scene of their murders. The first victim, Sasaki Megumi, was a 29 year old restaurant owner known for her strong personality and excellent cooking. She was last seen alive walking home from a party and the next morning her body was found in the woods, torn apart and impaled on tree branches with the Jack of Spades card found in her mouth. The second victim, Yamane Akio, was a singer whose body was found in a bar. His vocal cords ripped out and a gunshot wound to the head. The King of Diamonds card was found in his hands. The third victim, Kai Sakura, was a high school student whose body was found in a shallow grave, mutilated and with a crown sewn onto her head. The Queen of Clubs card was found on a stick marking the grave. The fourth victim, Hasegawa Hiroki, was a college student whose body was found with the Ace of Spades card. The fifth and final victim, Takahashi Ayumi was a nurse whose body was found with the Joker card. After doing further research, fortunately this person never existed in Japan. But in reality, there was a serial killer who was caught that was using playing cards. Except it was in Spain, not Japan. They were caught in 2003 and sentenced to 142 years in prison. And not to worry, they do not have a pack of playing cards with them, nor will I think they will ever be allowed to play with cards ever again. Number 7, The Howling Inuwaki Tunnel. The legend of the Inuwaki Tunnel and the village has been a source of fascination in Japan for decades. Located in the remote mountains of the Fukuoka prefecture, the tunnel is said to be haunted by the ghosts of those who went missing inside of it, and is only accessible through an abandoned village called the Inuwaki Village. According to the legend, all who enter the village are doomed to a violent death, and the Japanese constitution does not apply there. The legend of the Inuwaki Tunnel and village may have been inspired by a real life murder that took place in the tunnel in 1988. According According to the story, a group of teams kidnapped, robbed, and tortured a young man before burning him alive in the tunnel. The tunnel being remote and rarely used by traffic was a popular spot for gangs and the brutal murder likely contributed to the creation of the legend in the first place. Today, the tunnel is considered one of the most haunted places in Japan, with large concrete bricks blocking its entrance, but that hasn't stopped adventurers from trying to enter it. Locals say that electronic devices and even their cars often break down when they're around this tunnel and that others sometimes hear the sounds of barking dogs and ghostly screams emanating from deep inside of the tunnel. The legend has inspired numerous films and books and other sorts of media including the 2020 film Howling Village from Juan creator Takashi Shimizu. Number 6, The Yaomaba. Ever wanted to take a hike in the mountains of Japan? Well, just be on the lookout for the Yaomaba, also known as the Mountain Witch, who supposedly resides in these elevated regions of the country. Yaomaba is often depicted as an old woman with long, unkept hair and a wild experience who lives in the mountains and is associated with the spirit world. According to the stories, this creature is a benevolent figure who helps lost travelers find their way home, while in other stories, she is portrayed as a malevolent being who lures people into the mountains and causes them to go missing. Some locals claim that she was once a regular girl who ran into the mountains to escape false accusations. Here she grew angry and resentful and would eventually have cannibalistic tendencies along with practicing black magic. So on your next hike, don't be deceived by anyone you might come across because the amount of encounters with this creature leads me to believe that she's really up there in the mountains of Japan. Number 5, Kagomi Kagomi. Kagomi Kagomi is a Japanese children's game and in the game, a group of children joins hands and walks around in circles around a child 
who is chosen to be the Oni, or demon. The Oni sits in the center of the circle with their eyes covered, while the other children sing the Kagomi Kagomi song. When the song is over, the Oni has to guess the name of the person standing directly behind them. This game takes a sinister twist when a group of people found themselves caught in the game on a foggy suspension bridge. In this case, the group was split into two cars, with the first car carrying three people and the second car carrying four people. So when they reach the bridge, it is already getting dark and the fog is not helping. The first car comes to a halt and the couple gets out, joining hands. They then climb over the railing of the bridge and throw themselves off much to the shock and horror of the other passengers. One of the other people in the car is found talking to themselves, repeatedly muttering the quote, mustn't go. The couple is later found dead and is ruled to have both taken their lives. When they ask the remaining survivors of the first car what happened, they say that a girl wearing kimono suddenly appeared in front of their car, causing them to stop. This is when they said that their car was encircled by a group of children who then began saying kagomi kagomi. The children were enticing the passengers to join hands with them and the couple eventually gave in while the manager was protected by religiously repeating the phrase, mustn't go. Number four, the Red Room Curse. The Red Room Curse is a legend that has long circulated on the internet in Japan with various versions of the story being told. At its core, the legend involves a mysterious pop-up ad that appears on a person's computer announcing their impending death. According to the most common version of the legend, while browsing the internet, the victim will be presented with a pop-up featuring a black text on a red background that says, do you like blank? When the victim tries to close the pop-up, it reappears with the text changed to, do you like the red room? And the screen turns red, displaying a list of names of the red room's victims. After seeing the pop-up, the victim will sense a mysterious presence behind them and then lose consciousness. They will later be found dead in their home with the walls of the room in which they are discovered painted red with blood. The origins of the legend can be traced back to a Japanese interactive horror animation that was uploaded to GeoCities in the late 1990s. However, the legend gained notoriety in 2004 due to the Sasebo slashing, a murder case involving a young girl who is a fan of the animation and had the video bookmarked on her computer at the time of the murder. So there is some truth to this. But what do you guys think about the curse? Real or not? Number three, the cursed poem, Tamino's Hell. Published by Japanese poet Saiju Yasu, it is said that one of his poems named Tamino's Hell is cursed and could kill or haunt people if read loud. So just to not die, I'll be playing it safe and I'll just show you the poem rather than reading it. In 1974, Japanese filmmaker Terayama Suji directed a movie based on Tamino's Hell. Unfortunately, he ended up passing away in 1983. This is where people first believed that the movie was cursed, since the poem was used and read in the movie. As time went by, people began forgetting about the incident, but then in 2004, one Japanese writer published a book based on the poem, saying, quote, if you by chance happen to read the poem out loud, after you will suffer from a terrible fate which cannot be escaped. It's said that even hearing someone saying the poem out loud can lead your life into disaster or even death. So let's read it out loud. I'm just kidding, everyone relax. Nowadays, this poem is feared internationally, but for those who remain spectacle, come on. Give this one a read. Number two, The Curse of the Colonel. This might be odd to hear, but apparently a baseball team in the Kansai region of Japan named the Hunchin Tigers are supposedly cursed by the ghost of Colonel Sanders. Yes, the founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken. According to legend, the curse was placed on the team because of the colonel's anger over the treatment of one of his storefront statues, which was thrown in the Dotonbori River by celebrating Hashin fans after their team victory in the 1985 Japanese champ, which was thrown in the Dotonbori River by celebrating Hashin fans after their team's victory in the 1985 Japan Championship Series. The curse was said to explain the team's subsequent 18 year losing streak and many people believe that the team would never win another Japanese series until the statue was recovered. The curse has also been compared to the curse of the Bambino which is said to inflict the Boston Red Sox until they won the World Series in 2004. Despite the supposed curse, the Hashin Tigers have appeared in the Japan series three times since the statue has been thrown into the river, losing in 2003, losing in 2005, and losing in 2014. Whether or not the curse of the current is real, it has become an enduring and fascinating part of the Japanese sports legends. And also, the first time I've ever heard of the Kentucky Fried Chicken founder cursing something. Number one, human sacrifice at the Meiroka Castle. The Meiroka Castle, also known as the Mist Castle, is a Hiroyama style Japanese castle located in the city of Sakai. It is considered to be one of the oldest castles in Japan and is said to be protected by a mist that 
appears whenever an enemy is nearby. According to the legend, the castle was built at the end of the Sengoku period in the 1500s with the use of human sacrifice known as Hitobashira. The practice of Hitobashira or human pillars was believed to appease deities and protect against natural and man-made disasters. For those who don't know, it is basically making humans into the stone pillars and the walls that make up a building. It was commonly used in the construction of large buildings such as castles, dams, and bridges. However, the story of Mayuroka's castle's Hito Bashida centers around a woman named Oshizu, who is a poor one-eyed mother of two. When the construction of the castle was plagued by problems and the walls kept collapsing, Avisal suggested the use of human sacrifice. And this is when Oshizu was chosen for the sacrifice, and she only agreed to this on the condition that one of her children would be made into a samurai. Oshizu was entombed under the pillars of the castle, with stones being placed on top of her as she was slowly being crushed to death. It is said that she accepted her face stoically, knowing that her children would have a better future as a result. After her sacrifice, the walls of the castle remained standing, and the construction continued without further issues. However, the man responsible for the castle construction, Shibara Katsutoya, did not follow through on his promise to make Oshizu's son a samurai. As a result, Oshizu's spirit returned to haunt the castle, causing the moat to overflow every spring in a phenomenon known as the Tears of Oshizu. To this day, the Mairoka castle is said to be haunted by the vengeful spirit of Oshizu. Some claim to have seen her ghost wandering the castle grounds or heard her haunting cries in the castle during some nights.